certain complex websites have changing CSS because of their cache mechanisms, like Google. Um, but um, that aside, like WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, whatever, everything that's configurable, CRMs, they are all HTML, and, and as long as they're not Flash or something like that, um, this should work on it because it's silly and it's uh, this testing format. So what, what we want to do is we want to make um, we want to make uh, something like GitHub for tutorials, but for like the whole wide internet for any kind of configurable space, meaning I don't know rack space. If you want to like get a hosting account and then put a Drupal site on it and then configure it, you could do that. Um, we believe with, with that. So what we want to do is make make this. Um, database of, of open and free tutorials that anybody can contribute to and, and take benefit from um, um, with, with the very same business model as, as GitHub has where you have closed accounts and those you have to pay for. Right? So, so as long as you work in the open, contributing back to the community, you get it for free. As soon as you need, like, you know, you have got this important customer and the descriptions are specific for that customer and you know, it can't be shown on the internet that they're using this or what they're exactly saying about their tool. Then it would be um, then it would be a paying account. So and and to be able to go there, like because what what I'm doing right now is I'm I'm gathering support for this because I think this is very exciting. <laughs> uh, this is I've been thinking a lot about documentation and this, like every person I tell this about gets really excited and they start thinking like, oh, I could do this and this and this with it. I could like create links in the documentation that points to a specific form on a certain page, like right away there, kind of like jump starting into certain things. Um, and, and what I want to do is generate this momentum and really create a movement, like kind of like, um, uh, like OpenStreetMap, where you have an open database of how to get to places. Um, I would like to create an open street map of documentation of all the documented of all the configurable internet. Um, but to do that, I need your help. I need people on board that are excited about it, that want to go and try it, that want to use it. Uh, so and that's why we started a, a crowdfunding campaign just before Drupal Camp London. Like it was on Thursday that we started it. So it's like three days ago. Um, and we got already seven backers, including the documentation lead of Drupal, Lee Hunter, um, and a few other people. Um, and um, and uh, yeah, so I would like to invite you, if you think this is something worthy, something interesting, to come over and donate. Like, you can get, you can become a contributor for one dollar. So it's not so, it's not so much about the money. It's more about getting people involved and excited. Um, and like you know, or for five dollar you can get a you can get a pre-launch access. That's like that's a coffee, right? Uh, and you can be part of it. And um, and you know. Now, originally, I wanted to keep the hub first closed, but I've been thinking a lot about it. I've been talking with people, and right now, um, I I actually I want to create a distribution for documentation hubs, so that the stuff you've seen that creates the tutorials, you would be able to download and create your own site. And then we'll build an aggregator that collects the information from the different hubs. Um, now that's that's something like that's a bit risky because I you know that could be my own competition. <laughs> and or it could destroy the whole thing. Right? If it just splinters it up and nobody collaborates, then you know we didn't get anywhere again. Um, but I, um, that's why that's a, that's like the the bottom the bottom contribution, uh, which involves some uh, consulting work and stuff. So if you know anybody who could be interested in something like this, if you know anybody who has a serious documentation issue with lots and lots of people moving in, moving out that need to be trained in, in you know in Drupal configuring it or whatever, uh, get in touch, become a donor, <coughs> come talk with me. Take a chocolate, and uh, um, uh, and let's make this this work. Let's make this happen. Okay. Uh, are there any questions? Yes, Yana. Uh, <coughs> the 
content of the help text yeah. that be sort of context aware that the, uh, depending on the your previous action. For example, that if you, you submitted your username in step one, uh -huh. and then we now copy it here, that yeah. now you need to log in with that specific. Yeah. For that, we would need to put the recording ability into the player. Like it's probably somewhere on the roadmap, way further down the road. But it could be. Um, like, you know, we could work with. I've been thinking about working with tokens, uh, like, because we have uh, the URL, like maybe the starting path could be different. I could use the token in different places. So um, I, I see it, I think it's feasible, but it would require quite a lot of work. Okay. Other questions? Yeah? Um, how would you imagine the kind of the sort of merging, you know, kind of GitHub like merging function? Would that sort of be on a Drupal site? <coughs> sort of nose, yeah. Or is it more of a sort of export in a kind of text like format? So, so right now, every single description is its own node. Right. So, what we imagine, like, we have to work this out how we're going to do that exactly. But since it's flat text, um, you could do diffs and stuff like that on, on the, the body. Um, so, so I think we will be able to fairly easily do merging on a single, um, on a single description level. So that you, you know, you, I think, you could say like, okay, cherry pick this and this and this node. I want to, you know, the new updated version of it. I want to bring into my tutorial. Um, so that's um, that's not too hard. Um, okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, does any of you know that notice when version side changes and the tutorial stops working in step three? Yeah. Does it notice that you can't that it couldn't place the box anywhere and notify the think, tutorial writer that now yeah. there's a problem? I think we um, I need to verify it. I've I've been talking with people about this this weekend. Uh, that that and actually that's a really cool idea. And since it's a test, right? You, you, you can actually do that kind of stuff. So you would be able to know when your tutorial goes out of date, which is kind of mind-blowing, really. Uh, so, but I, I think that's feasible. I haven't tried it out, I haven't tested it, I haven't done any research in it, but I think it is possible. And that's like... <laughs> so you could do a regression test sort of a whole site. On your documentation. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so there was there were, yeah. on that note when Selenium fails it does give you an error message. So if you can find some way of capturing yeah. Selenium callbacks, you'll be able to yeah. generate an email from that yeah. and send it off. So probably like right now we don't run Selenium actually on your site. Yeah. Right? So we have our own like because we don't do the full Selenium thing and, and Selenium is a, this huge monster that's fairly complex to, to get into and I well we have to investigate that. But uh, that's it. You know, you remember the first three fields, the commands? That's a Selenium test. So we can we can import from Selenium, but we can export again to Selenium, right? So we you know we we could create tests for all your tutorials and then run those and verify that it's still working using just normal Selenium tools. Yeah. Um, first of all, amazing. Um, did you help help out with uh, developing tour module? Because no. this looks, I know, like apart from yeah. building using Selenium to actually build yeah. it, everything else is very identical. I, 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 we are using the same jQuery. Well, this is this is the thing. And, and so yeah. using um, Joyride. So we're using Joyride, and um, I, I never had thought that this could get into core. Right. It moved pretty quickly. Like, like I saw the issue, and then within yeah. that week, there was. I, I, I only learned about the issue like a few days ago when my colleague said like you have to look at this yeah. this is going in core it's like no way <laughs> so so um, and um, so when, and we're going to look like but this is like a few days ago that, that I learned that uh, so when, and I've already told my colleagues that we need to look at how we could contribute to to core so that maybe it could do more um, I don't know if we'll be able to get the selenium part in. But at least we should be able to export tutorials that can run on Drupal 8 core, right? Jamal jam files, it can't be very hard. Um, the, the, the issue with, with the tour module in core is that it can only work on one page, right? 
so it doesn't have a concept for stepping between pages. But we have to look like if we if we can, well, we're we're going to be looking at that if we can somehow sneak some of the Selenium stuff past the feature freeze. Um, but maybe we could. Uh, I'd have to have to discuss that. But that would be really cool because then you could. Um, because I think one of the biggest use cases for this kind of stuff for, for tour module is like configuring a module once you've installed it. And it's always different. There's always different screens and somewhere, some modules is there, some modules is there. Like when you're experienced, you know where to go. But for new users, it's, it's like, I installed the module, it doesn't work. And, and I think for, for um, module maintainers, that's like a very common uh, bug report. It just keeps coming back. Uh, so I think I think it's something that could be very important to like get this kind of uh, between screens. Yes, Jana. Would that, on the other hand, lead to the situation like with GPS that then you don't actually know where to go without the system? Probably yes, but do you care when you need to do something that is not in tutorial? Right. I think, um, but it's kind of like saying like you know I don't want to use a mobile phone because then then I won't be able to live without anymore, right? Or I don't want to learn reading because then it's going to change my brain <laughs> and I'm not going to be able to live without reading anymore. It's, it's, I, think, I think this could be a technology that makes our life better for us developers and makes a really amazing tool set available for the wider population who are not right now not able to use it. I think we're can I just, I'm just yeah. addressing that point, if I may. Yeah. Um, that um, maybe it's better to think of it as um, it's best that the module does install and that its default behavior is easy to understand and not to use the uh, tutorial as a patch to, yeah. to uh, a oh, yeah, of course, thing. Of course. So once it's well... Like the mapping apps on our, our phones, before that there were, you know, there were Google Maps, you, I would print out maps and take them with me when I was driving someplace. Yeah. And of course, a printed out map doesn't let you detour along the way and then get back on track. <laughs> right? But over time, it led to the next iteration. And I think yes. what, you're, what you've got is going to iterate over time and people will find ways of putting in detours and, and accommodating uh, that, that flexibility. Yes. So you can just find one more question because the next guy's got to be so. Yeah. Plus, as somebody who's doing documentation, we're going to do the documentation anyway. It's just a question on whether your modules will make it easier and therefore you yes. can have better documentation faster. Yeah. I think to have a final closing, mind-blowing idea that I want to put out there. Like, before we had maps, right? Before we had maps, you had to tell people how they could get somewhere by telling them every single step, where to turn, what to do, and so on. This is where we are right now with tutorials. Is it possible, is it possible to create for the configurable internet, which is this n-dimensional space, right? Like the earth is a flat space, you could say, you know, on, on the surface of the earth, you have a flat space, two-dimensional grid. Is it possible to create an n-dimensional grid that maps every possible configuration option on the internet, on your individual site. <laughs> so that you could say, I want my site, I want to go there. You know, like what you like when you go to Japan, if you don't have a GPS, you're you know, you're lost. There's nothing to do about it. With your GPS, you just say, I want to go there, and it's just, okay, there's a road here that goes there and then there, and it just drives you through all the roads that get there. Would it be possible to create a map of this crazy n-dimensional space so that you could go anywhere from anywhere and you wouldn't have to, so nobody would have to take the, explain the full road to get there? Think about that. <laughs> and thank you very much.